Hey, hey, what's up garden friends? Jeff here, how's everybody doing? Hope you're doing well. I'm great. Still just craving the urge to stick grass inside random things. Isn't this a beautiful jug? I picked this up at Home Goods. Has a little cork that goes in the top. It's kind of narrow. The glass is nice and sturdy, very thick. And I just don't think that what I'm doing is like the best idea ever. So don't really consider this a a tutorial. This is just kind of like a watch me do something that I'm going to severely regret in several weeks. I have already given this a rinse with some rubbing alcohol. I just poured it in the top, swirled it around, and then let it most of it pour out alcohol. You know, it evaporates fairly well on its own. So there are some drops that you don't care. It's been sterilized. Sterilized. Starting with the drainage reservoir, I'm going to get some charcoal poured in here. Okay, and by some, apparently I meant a lot. That's fine. That's good, actually. I think that's a good size layer. I did rinse the charcoal off and then set it out to dry and it looks like there's still some dust in there. It's okay, whatever. Oh, you know what? Actually, now that I look at this and I see this curve here, I should probably add just a little bit more. A little shake. Now there's a nice drainage area for water to wash down into and sit and be somewhat cleaned by that charcoal. Helps keep things a little bit more tidy in the terrariums. And then on top of that charcoal, I wanna add some nice porous stone, something that has some surface area for bacteria to grow. Uh, this is actually fish tank, fish tank, fish tank filtration media, biological media. It's a type of pumice, I believe. I don't really know. Seachem matrix is very similar to this. This stuff's kind of pricey, really just stone. Something to separate the soil that's going to be up here from the charcoal down below. Now I'm gonna add a layer, a small layer of pre-moistened soil right on top of there. There'll be some overlap, get some seeds poured in here and that's going to be it. We'll come back and see how it looks in a couple of weeks. Spent all this time, did all this cleaning, set things up, just tried to make it nice. Just wanted to make it nice. And the wind came through, knocked this jasmine pot over and snapped the trellis right in half and broke the pot. It's how things go sometimes. It's okay, I can glue it back together, not the end of the world. Okay. It's been about 10 days. But look at this, is, this isn't pretty. That's what 10 days of wheat grass in a jar looks like. You, not much has happened with it. It just looks cool. It was fun to grow, a lot of fun to watch. You can tell which side got more sunlight, right? And look at that. There's so much more growth on this side than on the other. So with that in mind, should rotate this. I don't know what the longevity of this would be though, right? I would imagine probably not much. So that's something I should probably emphasize. I think I made that point though at the beginning of the video, didn't I? That this is just, this is a bad idea. I haven't had to water this at all. I don't know if I really emphasized or made the point that I should have in regards to the uh, pre-moistened soil. So with that, the idea was that the soil needed to be really, really wet because the seeds needed a moist environment to get started and don't have a lot of space here to be pouring water in for it to flush down and moisten everything up. So it was very important that that was nice and saturated so that those seeds could get going without needing any additional water. I also mentioned the porous nature of the drainage layer here. That's really not necessary. I was in fish tank mode. It doesn't hurt. I mean, having a porous surface around your gravel or whatever you're using between the charcoal or carbon, whichever you use in the soil, Whatever's in that middle layer, if it is porous, that is just gonna provide area for beneficial bacteria to grow. It's not, not a bad thing, but it's also not really necessary. Just stone, gravel, whatever you feel like using to separate the soil from the reservoir down below, that, that's all you need. I have had a ton of fun watching this grow. It's been very exciting and it's wheat grass. It's stuff just grows like crazy. Germinates very, very quickly. It's only been 10 days and look at how much is going on in here. And that brings me to the final point of why you probably shouldn't do this. This is probably a terrible idea, but it satisfied an urge that I had and now I'm gonna have to figure out how to maintain it. Wheat grass normally needs some pruning and there's a very, very narrow opening up here to work with. This, 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 this is why this was a bad idea. Now, I have plenty of tools that I use for aquascaping or for moving corals around in my tank. The nice long tweezer tools and even some angled scissors so I could get in there and do some trimming if I felt like it. I doubt that I will, but if it gets to a point where it's so tall that it's choking itself out, then I will do that. But first I'll wanna make sure that there's a really solid layer of roots in here so that I can tilt it upside down to be able to shake out the clippings or maybe even use a small vacuum hose to get in there and get the clippings out. Drying and decaying grass releases a lot of nitrogen, which is not a bad thing in an enclosed system, right? But it might potentially be overkill for something like this. 
when it gets to a point where I need to redo this or just get the grass out, that's, that's where the big problem is going to be. But like I mentioned, I have tools that I can use, tweezers to go down and pull portions out from the bottom through the top. I'm not, it's gonna take a long time. I'll be cursing myself while I'm trying to get it done. But for now, I'm gonna sit back and just enjoy the glass terrarium. There are plants that would be a lot smarter to put in here. There are some forms of Tradescantia that can live a really long time in an enclosed system like this. There's a Syngonium, the Super Dwarf Pixie. I have some in other terrariums. They stay very, very, very tiny and very petite and would fit in here well. This was just for fun and I'm enjoying it. I would imagine probably in the next month or two, I'll have to start pulling some of those out. Comment down below if you have suggested plants that would be a better idea for something like this. This was for entertainment purposes only, so we could just enjoy the grass. It's springtime. It's something lush and green and simple and very much instant gratification because that wheatgrass, it grows so, so, so fast. I'm sure there'll be plenty of comments that just talk about how this is stupid. And that's fine. You're right. I already said it. This this was a terrible idea. But also don't know until you try, right? So there will be updates on this in various vlogs and things that come out over the next few weeks or however long I have it. I'll be sure to let everybody know how it's doing. It is very, very windy right now. One thing I did find interesting with this setup was that the grass got to right around here, right about where it is, and it stalled out. It stopped growing. I did two other grassy type planters at the same time as this one, and they all outgrew this in the same amount of time. I'm not saying that the jar is going to control the growth because I don't think that it is, but there's something different going on in there. I put a lot of thought into it. It's just an observation. Another thought that I had with this, something that I had been thinking about when I planted it up was that if I had brought that soil level down further, then obviously there'd be more room for the grass to grow up top, but I would have to sacrifice that drainage layer, or at least a good chunk of it, which in a closed system, not always the best idea, but wheatgrass is such a thirsty plant that it might be okay. I don't know. If I had done it like that, then I would have taken the cork out the top. I wouldn't leave that in there. I'd want for there to be some gas exchange, pardon all the reflections, by the way. It's just the nature of filming through glass. Oh, in the morning, there's tiny little dewdrops on top of the blades of grass. It's really fun to look at in the morning and in the evening, which is pretty typical for a terrarium, right? Especially when it's closed, there usually is some sort of dew drop, some transpiration going on inside the container, but it just looks neat when it's on the grass because, you know, morning dew in a jar. How fun and unnecessary. All right, that's going to do it. It's getting windy out here. Like I said, I will keep people updated with how this does. Don't have high expectations. This is just sort of a little experiment here. Comment down below. Say hi. Hope everybody's doing well, having a great day and a great life and everything's just going beautifully for you. I am somewhat rushing through getting out of this video because the neighbor's outside with the yard work tools and now the neighbor's dog's barking. As always, and most importantly, everybody, keep on growing. Bye-bye.